just to give you a really general overview, most studies um, indicate that men have a higher risk for Parkinson's disease than women. And the study that I cite here is really is a meta-analysis. So they took together all the prior epidemiological studies and pulled them together and looked at and showed that the risk really does look to be higher than men, even across different samples, across different study designs, where there's different levels of ways to ascertain the case. And that's pretty consistent, at least what we see in practice. In our clinic, it's about two to one ratio of men to women. Um, and people have proposed that some of this might be still social barriers to care, but there's been a whole a um, avenue of research looking at biological evidence for sex differences, and a lot of it focuses on the effects of estrogen. And most of the work has been in animal studies, and animal studies pretty consistently show that estrogen is neuroprotective, usually in mice models of uh, Parkinson's, which isn't obviously the same as a human brain. So when we look at humans, the effect of estrogen is a little bit more conflicting, although I would say, I mean, there's, there's publication biases in some of this because probably negative studies don't get published, so we see mostly positive studies. But studies that try and look at how long women have been exposed to estrogen in their life and then relate that to risk of Parkinson's disease mostly show that the people who have lower levels of estrogen during their lifetime have a higher risk of Parkinson's disease. And they, and they can, they, this is all retrospective. So no one's you know, from birth measuring how much estrogen you have every day and then looking to see if you develop Parkinson's disease. They're trying to ascertain after you've developed Parkinson's disease, what your levels of estrogen were during your life. And that can be really challenging to do. And so some of the ways they do that is to see at what age your period started, at what age you had menopause, if you took supplemental estrogens during your life, you know how many children you may have had, and during that period of pregnancy, your hormones are different. And then they try and calculate that. And that's really challenging because there's a lot of biases in how people recall that data, and not everyone has the same levels of estrogen, and there's also progesterone as well, and hormone replacement is another whole big complication in measuring the effects. But regardless, in trying to account for all the problems in studying this, it seems to be overall that women who've had lo lower estrogen exposure in their life have a higher risk of PD, which fits with this, what we see, that women have a lower risk of Parkinson's disease. But in addition to the incidence studies, there's a whole other body of literature that shows that women are less, with Parkinson's disease are less, less likely to receive levodopa treatment, have greater nursing home placement, and higher mortality than men. And how that could potentially relate to estrogen is much further away. So it doesn't necessarily, there's not necessarily a biological connection between the medications you receive. There's no evidence that women don't have as good a response to medicine as uh, men. It may need to be dosed differently based on body size, but the response should be the same. There's no evidence that there's a more severe disease progression in women that leads to earlier nursing home placement or mortality. But this, these are things we don't really know, and I think we try to look at some of it through our the, using the Parkinson's Outcomes Project data, which is a really rich data source to look at outcomes. 